Hi guys, Tim here. Uh, welcome to the first episode of a new series we're going to do on this channel. Uh, we're going to be doing a playthrough of Transport Fever 2. Now I know the main purpose of this channel is to go through as I build my Chicago Northwestern end scale layout, um, but I thought this would be a fun piece to add to because until that layout's up and I can do some operations on it, this is the game I've been playing to kind of scratch my railroad itch a little bit. So for those of you unfamiliar with the game, the basic premise is you're trying to connect these cities to all of the industries that you see on the map you, to, to fit their unique demands and, and help the cities grow and thrive, maintain the supply chains, all that stuff. Um, and each city has a unique set of resources that they need. For example, St. Louis here on this map needs uh, goods and machines, whereas just to the west, the city of Costa Mesa over here needs construction materials and goods. Uh, and then you get them from the different places you see on the map. So for example, again, St. Louis needs goods, and then just to the north of St. Louis is a goods factory. But then you notice the goods factory needs things, right? It needs plastics and steel. So then you gotta figure out, okay, well, how do I transport those materials? So for example, with plastics, you know, you've got three options right here. Um, if I go with this one, then I gotta find grain. If I go with this one, I gotta find oil. So you can see that it's, uh, you know, it's pretty involved. You gotta have a pretty efficient flow of goods, and you gotta make sure that you're not overcommitting too many, you know, resources where you're just having a stockpile store up and not getting used. But then you also need to make sure you're meeting demand. So it's pretty cool, um, and that's really the challenge. Like, there's not any rival companies or anything in the game. It's just about how well can you manage the flow of goods throughout the map. So this is, you know, this is a random map. Again, if you're not familiar with the game, uh, when you do a free game like this, it just randomly seeds it. So this is a very large map size um, with a medium density of cities. So there's 16 cities. Um, and then with a high density of industries. I am using some mods because the connection to the channel is we're gonna do a Chicago Northwestern playthrough. So I've imported a bunch of mods that have North uh, CNW, you know, locomotives and rolling stock, but I've also added uh, a few other ones to help expand the gameplay. So there's the expanded industries, you know. So for example, uh, paper and a few other things that aren't in the stock game. But again, you can see this is this is a pretty large map, and it may not look it like that right now because we're at like the maximum zoom out view. But you can get you know really, really close and get right down to the ground level action there. So that's the other part of the game is it can be pretty cinematic as well as strategic if you really want to get to enjoy that part of it. So um, I mean I haven't built anything yet we're doing this is a hard mode playthrough because I don't want it to be you know easy I want it to be a little bit of a challenging build. Um, so we're starting in 1930 I'm gonna go ahead and slow the speed here to half um, the game will still progress, but it'll move through the calendar at half the pace. I think this, the default speed's way too fast. You move through and get technology way too quickly, in my opinion. And then we're starting with 10 million, so we are, um, but notice it's all loaned to us. So we gotta eventually pay that 10 million off, otherwise we're gonna be continually dealing with interest payments. So like I said, I haven't built anything yet, um, but I did scout around the map uh, to make sure, you know, to figure out, Make sure I had some idea how I wanted to start so that way we could get through, we could get going here pretty fast. And I'm starting with the town of Hartford. And the reason why is because I found that there's two really important things you have to do to get a good start to a to a Transport Fever 2 playthrough. Uh, and that's one, you need to start with a pretty simple supply chain. So now Hartford does have goods, which I said earlier was not simple. We're gonna ignore that one for now. We're gonna worry about their fuel. Uh, and that's because there is a fuel refinery right next door. And not only is the fuel refinery right next door, but you can see in order to make fuel, uh, you need oil. Well, just to the north of Hartford, there's an oil refinery that makes the oil from crude oil. Two crude oil makes one oil. Well, if you caught it, just over here is an oil well. So within this pretty decent size amount of space, we have everything we need to cover Harvard's fuel needs. And not only Harvard, or Hartford, if you zoom out, just up to the northwest here, Miramar also needs fuel. And then if we really want to add some distance, 
uh, Springfield also needs fuel, and then Springfield needs food, as does Miramar. So there's there's potential for for growth um, with some pretty simple industries. So that's rule number one: is start with a pretty simple supply chain. But then rule number two is you really need to find a way to develop routes that generate profit going both ways. Meaning, you know, like if I have a bunch of trucks pick up fuel and take it to Hartford, they'll make money selling the fuel in Hartford but then you know they're coming back empty-handed they're not going to make any money here but if I could find a way to sell goods in both directions then I'm maximizing my profitability even better and we're gonna be able to do that because what we're gonna do is you know we gotta get this this crude oil the raw oil up here and then we gotta get the, the refined oil down here so how I'm gonna set this up I think is I'm going to uh, run some trucks from this oil well and they're gonna drop the the crude oil the unrefined oil off at a holding facility right over here now that might seem odd because that's not what this needs well what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a cargo station for a rail route right here that'll take that crude oil, the train will pick up the crude oil, drop it off here, make money for dropping off the crude oil, then it'll pick up the refined oil, bring it back down, drop it back off at that same cargo station, sell it to these guys. So our train's gonna make money both ways. And then finally there'll be one more truck route that drops off the fuel over here in Hartford. And that'll be the plan. Now I've got the game paused because um, in, in Transport Fever 2, unless you have all of those things up and running, um, the industries won't know to actually produce the goods. Meaning, until I have trucks trying to deliver fuel from Hartford, or from the refinery to Hartford, this place won't know that the refinery needs fuel. Uh, because it doesn't think it has any customers, which means that the crude oil place won't know to send anything up there because it doesn't think, so you got to have all the parts humming. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, first things first, I am going to go ahead and actually kind of prep the town a little bit. So these towns grow over time, right? Right now Hartford only has 103 residents. That's tiny. We're By the time we get deep into this playthrough, they're going to have thousands of residents. And it's this game's kind of like the inverse of um, like a city, like any of the city sim games, like Skylines or anything like that, where you know you build the city and then that leads to more transit. You build the transit, the cities develop kind of organically in response to the supplies that you give them. So, but we're going to help them. So, some of these, you know, you, you'll see new roads crop up, you'll see new buildings, but they don't necessarily have traffic flow in mind when the new roads just spring up. So, I'm going to build a ring of wider roads with bus lanes which our trucks can use as well just to ensure that once we start moving goods towards the city that we've got some reliable roads um, to, to get everything there. So we're going to go ahead and just build a loop around because eventually we'll probably want to put some you know mass transit in here too. And again if we already have reliable roads and you're going to find out because eventually we're going to have to expand this main street because right now it's just a it's just one lane each way it costs a ridiculous amount of money to expand roads once there's buildings already on them so we want to avoid that as much as we can which is why i'm trying to do some upgrade work to start okay and there we go i'm gonna upgrade that a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and connect some of these roads up a little bit again to facilitate growth a little bit more. Cool. And then I do want to make sure that I own don't yet. I want to make sure I'm owning this perimeter because uh, if you if you don't own the roads, then you leave it to the mercy of the cities to potentially modify it. And I don't necessarily want them to do that. So, okay. So now we're good there. Now let's mosey on over and start our first chain of our little operations. So right now, if I don't build a road, our trucks are gonna go all the way up over and down. That's crazy. So we're gonna, 
we're going to build a country road. Uh, now these do matter because they have higher speed limit tolerances. For now in 1930, this isn't going to matter because the top speed I think is 25 miles an hour for any vehicle. But eventually, you know, we don't want to shoot ourselves in the foot here. So eventually this is going to matter. So I'm going to build this out. Let's upgrade, upgrade this road as well so that way they can still, okay. So it's too close to that factory. So we're just going to have to build Now we got to make sure that it's close enough to the factory that it will connect. See how you got these like gray appendages? That's how you know you're good to go. Okay. And then oh, we got to be a little tricky here, not clip the corner. Done. Okay. We also, I'm also going to fix this. Right now, if I were to have the trucks go to the city, they'd come up and then down. And that just seems needless. Now it's going to yell at me because this road connects Hartford to Miramar. So yeah, it's going to warn me about that. We're going to rebuild that. Just going to clear out. Just going to change that. future proof in a little bit but that's okay so now we need to build a place for our uh, for our guys to pick up their oil and let's see here now I always you'll see what I mean in a second I always mess this up let's see if I can get it right this time so we only need one platform because they're only going to do one action here they're going to pick up the the crude oil so I can never remember what side to put the entrances and exits on because if you put it the wrong way, the game gets kind of wonky and it tries to do like a weird loop to loop. Let's see if I can avoid that. So I don't want them entering and exiting the same way. So ideally, they come up through here, pick up the oil, come out here, and then move on. And see how this is highlighted? That means that it's serving that industry. So we're good there. Okay. So. Let's try and get this lined up a little bit. Now we're gonna need two platforms here because that truck route's gonna finish, but the fuel delivery truck route will also start. So we need spaces for the two different cargos here. So let's do that. Let's go through and configure it. You won't need as much cargo space here. The reason why you want more cargo space is um, it, it does actually matter. If you have too much cargo and not enough space, uh, it'll start to just destroy it. They'll just start destroying cargo and then you're just basically you know, burning money at that point. So you don't want that, but that should be okay. Build there, build there, and then, so in this game, you know, your vehicles don't come out of nowhere, so you have to build a road depot. That's where any purchased vehicles will come from. So we gotta build that, and the last thing we gotta build is a truck unloading stop here in town. So, where should we build this sucker? So you can see the buildings that need fuel because they have the fuel icon over them. I'm trying to future-proof this though because this town will grow. And also this game has a really weird thing where you would think like this would be the logical part, but notice there's like a dead spot right around the drop-off zone. It's almost like an eye of a hurricane kind of effect or I don't know what it is, but they're not gonna get that even though they're right there. So I'm gonna put this over here because you can see that all of our fuel buildings right now are highlighted. So, all right, and then one more thing I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna build two different entrances and exits because I don't want the two truck lines competing for the same space. Now let 
let's test and see if this works. So we're going to build our line. And this is, I'll call this Hartford Crude Oil. I'm going to give it a dark gray color since it's oil. Drop it off there. All right, look at that. Okay, so it comes around, picks it up, moves back along. I did not have the loop de loops, so I actually put the entrances on the right side. Good deal. Okay, now we got to make a new line. And we're going to call this one part for fuel. And we're going to make that one orange because it's fuel. And we're going to drop it off right here. Okay. So looking at this, we got a couple problems. First of all, it's using the one entrance, which we don't want. And then if you look over here, it's just flipping a UE. Now that might be fine for now when there's only a hundred people here, but again, this town's gonna get massive and in the future, that's gonna be a problem. So there is a way to force routes to go certain places. Uh, and that is through waypoints. So I'm going to put a waypoint here, I'm going to put a waypoint here, and I'm going to put a waypoint there. Now, I'm going to edit this route. So after they pick up the fuel at Lower Hartford, I don't want them to go to Poplar Street first. I want them to go to waypoint number two. So they go through the exit. And then I don't want them to just go straight to Poplar Street. There we go. And now we have a nice loop, right? So that way there's a nice sense of flow to the traffic. And then after Poplar Street, I don't want them to go straight back to Lower Hartford. I want them to take a stop at that waypoint. And now we are good to go. But remember what I told you, that un if, unless you, even though we have the line all drawn up, uh, and, until you buy and assign a vehicle to it, it's not considered active. So we're going to go down, uh, we're going to use these Ford Model 77s. Again, they can only go 25 miles an hour. So not the greatest, but it'll, it'll get us there. So I'm going to buy one. And I'm going to put it on the Hartford fuel line. And then I'm going to buy 10 more. And I'm going to put them on the crew oil line. We're going to need a ton of trucks for this operation. This thing, you'll you'll see, this thing's going to start cranking oil out once it gets going. But like I said, if we were to unpause right now, it wouldn't because this does not need crude oil. So it's not going to send it. It doesn't make any sense yet. So that's where our middle route's going to come in. And we got to build a cargo station. Don't need any can't marry. Now I want to see, hmm. Yeah, let's build that like that. That looks good. Because I want to leave some room off to the left so that way there is opportunity for um, additional tracks if we need them for future lines. And the reason I'm doing 240 it might seem like kind of long, but again, we're going to be using this industry heavily into into the more of the modern era, and those trains are going to start to get long. So, well, you know what? No, we're going to do 160 for now. We're we're tight on money. It's going to make a difference. Okay. So let's build that there. Now we got to build a road to connect it, because right now. If I click on it, notice nothing's highlighting. It's not going to serve any of those. So we need just a brief road. Nothing fancy. See how I got the appendages things again? Okay. So now I click on it and it's highlighted. All right. So now both. So now, see how it's critical this truck is depot's highlighted because otherwise it wouldn't work. So. Now we gotta build, I gotta go up here, and actually, because I'm a little OCD, I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna need this road. And I'm gonna 
put the service road here on the other side. Alright, so now we just need to build our station here. Make sure it's nice and lined up. Perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and build the depot back here. Okay. Now, where are we going? Now you might think I got the angle wrong on this on this station, but I'm doing it this way so that way we can potentially use this station for other routes as well, not just for this one. For now, we'll do a, a, a rail crossing. Eventually, we'll, we'll build a bridge, um, so that way this doesn't mess up car traffic that much. And the maximum speed limit is 75. It's not going to matter much for now, but again, we want to do what we can to keep it yeah, all 75, because again, eventually in the future, trains will be able to get to that speed. And we don't want tight curves and poor track to, to hurt us on that. So let's go ahead and build our line. And this is Hartford. Let's call this the oil run. Make this one dark gray as well. So it's going to start there and then go there. And then it'll just logically go back. Now, Pretty soon we're going to need to add some signals and track and stuff, but for now we're only going to one, run one train, so we don't need to worry about that just yet. So I think we've got everything set up. We've seen to build our first train, and then we'll hit and pause, and then we'll be good to go. So it's 1930. We've got the Alco available, but it's it's pretty. I mean, it's cheap, definitely cheap, and definitely low maintenance, but not a ton of power. You can see that, you know, even the 10 wheeler has more power than it. I mean, shoot, the 260 almost has as much power as it, and that was one of the first ones you could get in the game. Um, we certainly don't need a 282, although that has crazy amounts of power. Tractive effort, if you're unfamiliar with the game, that's what you look at to figure out how, you know, how quickly it starts up, how well it can go up, you know, uh, inclines, elevations. Um, the 412 too is just a, a beast <laughs> and expensive as I'll get out. It's gonna cost two million a year just to keep it operational. We're gonna settle on here, the 442. Um, 400 grand a year, but 700 kilowatts for power. That's gonna be our sweet spot here. So we're gonna add that. And we're gonna add uh, tank cars because it'll hold all of the resources, uh, crude oil and oil should we need to eventually run some fuel to another town tank cars will work for that too so i'm going to put let's go 72. that'll take us up we'll have about five hundred thousand dollars remaining and i'm going to put it on the line so now we've got vehicles assigned to every line so now if i press play You'll see trucks are coming out. And if it's working, the oil should be, yep, already the oil is starting to pile up, which is perfect. I'm gonna speed this up here a little bit, so that way you can see it rolling. And then here goes our one truck to keep this line alive. Now, once we actually start to see fuel getting made, we'll buy more trucks. But again, this is just a placeholder truck to keep the route active, so that way it knows. Now right now it does not list Hartford as a customer. That's simply because it doesn't have anything yet, right? Whereas if you look over here, this has already identified the oil refinery as a customer. It's got, you know, the shipping count is growing. But again, over here, it doesn't list uh, Hartford Refinery is a customer yet because it doesn't have any materials. Now, if you notice with each of these industries, there's different levels. So, obviously, the higher the level, the more it produces. Um, but they have no incentive to produce at a high level because, you know, there's there's no real demand yet. 
Now the one downside of this plane is we're initially going to lose a decent amount of money because this train's running empty, right? There's there's nothing there yet for it to pick up because here comes you know here comes the first truck now. But again, if we hadn't put that train on the line, these trucks wouldn't have known to have picked up crude oil in the first place. So it's kind of a catch twenty two. But this is I think probably the cleanest way to handle it. So there's going to be a little bit of a backup as these trucks initially pick up, but then once they're able to get space as they drive, you won't we should eventually see a steady flow. And again, we're gonna to need to get more trucks. 10's not gonna cut it, because you're gonna see, I mean, look, it's our, it's, we're not keeping up, right? It's still going up even as we're loading these trucks up. So we're gonna to need to get some more trucks as soon as we have some money. Now, now look, uh, these trucks are dropping off. It's dropping off. Dumped off his nine crude. Now he's a profitable route. And waiting over here, there's already 18 crewed waiting for the train. Where is the train? Here it is. Now, like I said, see, it's it's 300,000 in the hole. We're almost, you know, we we're, we're we're losing money right now. That's gonna start to change after the train has a couple runs with cargo. How much is waiting for it? 36. So even with this first one, it's only gonna run probably about half full, and that's okay. I'm gonna speed this up even more. We just need to get we just need to get the ball rolling on this. We might even go negative for a little bit. It's not the end of the world. We could actually borrow more. We could borrow a lot more if we wanted to. I don't want to just yet. I want to see all of these lines starting to generate some profit, and then um, if we need to borrow to get you know like another train or something going, we will. Because trains are expensive. If you watch you know other channels do playthroughs, they usually actually try and avoid starting with trains at all. Um, they try and do everything initially with trucks, but this is a Chicago Northwestern playthrough, so dang it, we're going to start with some trains. So you can see again, we're in the we're in the hole, but he just dropped off 54, and now we're in the black. And look, the overall uh, loss was cut, but we're still not even seeing the real magic happen yet because look, it only has you know one oil, right? We haven't given this place time to process everything fully yet right but so when it comes back it's gonna have a fair amount waiting for it but if you missed it when I was doing the initial overview it takes two crude oil to make one oil so there's a little bit of inefficiency here because the train will always come back at half of the capacity that it ran at but that's okay there's really that's really not to be avoided with how this this is set up here now you'll notice I'm gonna slow down there's 27 is this already full? Okay, yeah. All right, so we already have kind of a good problem here, where it's not keep this train's not keeping up. That's a good thing, because that means that here pretty soon, once we start to recover from our initial purchases, we'll need to get a second train. So we'll need to get some more trucks, and we'll need to get some more trains, because we're not keeping up. And again, that's part of the challenge of this game is. You know, it's not just enough to get some goods to point A to point B, it's how, how can you maximize your efficiency, making sure you're running full trains, but not leaving cargo waiting at the station. Because this is just wasted dollars at this point. But watch what's going to happen on its return. Slow it down here for a second. So it's got 29 fuel. So a little bit more. Right, so now we're profitable for the first time. And this is only going to grow the more times it runs. We'll follow this one on journey back up. You can see, we're going to look at our lines. The only line that's losing money is Hartford Fuel, but that's just because it hasn't had a chance to pick up any, any fuel yet. My guess is by the time this thing gets back down, we're going to need to pause and, and build some more trucks. So this thing's flying through. Auto save. There we go. Yeah, look at, that, look at that fuel waiting for us. Perfect. Okay, see, and look, half coming back, just like I said. So, but now look at look at already how profitable we are, right? We're already half a million in, in the black compared to we were, you know, that far in the hole before this thing started running cargo. So we're in good shape. Stop following this here so we can go back and see how we're looking. So 
Yeah, we're not, we don't need a second train just yet. There's only a little bit more than its capacity. We definitely need some more trucks. I can't buy eight. We don't have enough money. Let's go with six. Oh, no. Just lost some money from expenses, so we're going to buy five. So we're going to put one on the fuel and four on the crude oil. Because look, our fuel, we're going to need more trucks than that. Our fuel's building up, so we definitely are going to need to get more trucks. There we go. Four more trucks for that line. Or two more trucks for that line, I should say. Sorry. But that's critical because it, these don't really count until you finish their destination. See how right now it says we've only transported 9% of the goods? This won't level up unless our production, our demand, and our transport are all sitting over here. you got to get all of them over there. So that's crucial. And this town's not going to grow unless it actually has the goods delivered, right? Right now it's only sitting at 4 out of the 5 out of 38. But it is starting to grow a little bit, even with that, right? Nine, and you're seeing it grow. Look, you've got some buildings right here that are growing. These new ones need fuel too. And they're covered by perfect. That's what we want to see. Let's look over here. Okay, see, this is what I was talking about. When you see this little exclamation point, we are losing, they're just destroying cargo because we've run out of space. So we need to get even more trucks on this route. How many do we got right now? 16? 14. Let's see if we can get up to 20. Not enough money. Alright, we can get up to 19 at least. And again, we could borrow money to do this, but I'd really like to see how far we can get here without having to do that. We also notice, right, we are going to need that second train here pretty soon, because now Remember last time we looked it was at 90 before it showed up, now it's at 90 after it showed up. So we're going to need a second train here pretty soon. So we'll probably take out a loan, expand our loan here in a minute. See, ideally you don't buy a ton of trucks all at once to avoid these kind of backlogs, but we're trying to get this up and running. I think that's our goal for this first episode is if we can get a uh, second train and get our industries leveled up, that'd be a great stopping point because then we've got a nice little cash cow baseline for our route and that way we can start to look next episode at expanding to other cities, other industries once we get kind of our network established. I'm actually going to go and take the time up to regular just because the faster we get to diesels the more northwestern of a playthrough this is. So we've got some cool GP7s and a few other things, that pretty early diesels that we've got uh, modded, and I want to show those off because they're pretty sweet. Alright, so I think we can get to, let's go to 25, 24, not enough money, 23, I'd like to ideally get up to 24, maybe 6 on this line, and then we can look to get that train. And then I think we'll be in good shape. Yeah, this is a pretty smooth flow right now with, with the amount of trucks that we have. And Okay, and see, look, those extra trucks are making a difference. We're out of that danger zone. There's still tons extra, but we're working, it's slowly working our way down. So we might even, we might even be fine as we are right now. But notice that this is still the base level. And it's not even fully shipping everything yet. So we will eventually need to increase our capacity even more. But let's go ahead and get our extra two for this. And let's go ahead and take out our loan. And borrow another seven now. Now, we can't just throw another train on the line because they'll just run into each other, right? There's a single track. And unlike if you ever played the old like Railroad Tycoon 3, where it would just kind of assume there's a passing siding, that's not how this game works. You legit have to have either a passing siding or just have it be double tracked. Um, if we were trying to be really frugal, we would just do a passing siding in the middle, but 
Uh, that's not what's going to happen. We're going to go ahead and double track this. So, build our track parallel here. Until we get, get a little closer. And then we'll connect this up here. Come back. Connect this up here. Now, I'm going to be really true to history here. You know, for most railroads, for most American railroads, you would have your traffic run right hand, but the Northwestern ran left hand main. Now, these signals are important because without the signals, the train is just going to look at the, the stretch of track and it's going to be a simple yes or no question. Is there another train on the track? And if it answers that question yes, it just won't move. It'll say, nope, track's occupied. But if you add a signal, then what it does is it goes, okay, I'm just checking to see if the, if the track's occupied up until the next signal. And if it's not, I'll proceed. So even though you see this train, I'm going to slow this down so I can so you see this train right here if there was a signal behind it another train would go up to that signal if i didn't have the signal it would stay parked right all the way back here at the station so we got to add signals so we're going to run left hand main so we're going to tell it go this way this way this way This way. All right, now we should have put signals for the other line. And it should pick up on this, and if we look at the route. Put one more here right before the switch just to make sure we're good. Yep, see, it already knows. Yep, we're gonna go left hand main. Perfect. Okay, so now we just need, and I'm just gonna copy the train because it's, it's working a treat. And I'm gonna use the little bit of leftover money we've got. I'm gonna take each one up to 84 capacity. Okay, and you see our next train running through. Now this one's probably gonna steal this fuel, that's okay. We're going, now see, this is why we needed to do this. Look, now we've run out of room here, right? We have over 300 just sitting here. We're just wasting it, it's no good. All right, now we are inching up to leveling this thing up. So if you look, let's see here, let's see what we got. Yeah, look, we're already up to 266. There's still some room for growth. Needs 42. How we look, okay, mm, but now we've got a problem. Cause see, this is no longer reaching all of our fuel, which is, which would it be? Um, this would be. Okay, so we're gonna tweak this route a little bit. I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna build a new truck stop there. We're not gonna need this waypoint anymore, and we're not gonna need this. And now it's yelling at me because I just blew up that route. That's okay. It's telling me it can't find Poplar Street, which is correct. But after that, it's gonna go here. And that should fix things. Bingo Banco, okay. Now, we might see the demand creep up even faster because we're now connected to more buildings. Yep, see, look at that already. Going up slightly as it connects to more of those new buildings, perfect. Now hopefully we see this dip over time. You don't want to see it crash right away because otherwise you're going to start running partially full trains and then you are wasting money. All right. Now 
notice it's not burning through everything, right? Like if it was keeping up, this would be, you know, what, 42 full? It's only 24 full? Because this is only its base level. So, oh, all right, new planes available. We're not going to do planes for a while, but all right, there you go. Um, notice it's, it's taken its time. So that's one of the benefits. But again, this isn't going to level up because as far as it knows, it doesn't need to. Because this, ooh, here we go. Now we're starting to level up. So we're finally reached enough shipments to get to the point where it, it needs to level. So let's see this, and then we should see a chain reaction where once this levels up, then the refinery should level up, and then finally the oil well should level up, and that'll be kind of a good pausing point for today. Although one thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna edit these again. Let's go ahead and add one more car to each because I think we're gonna need it. Oh no, check this out. There's barely enough fuel here to, to fill these trucks up. So so right now we're, we're at one of those inefficiency points, right, where we really don't need as many trucks as we have, but we know this is about to level up, so it's okay. Normally if I saw this, I would sell some trucks because again, it's inefficient and you're wasting money on maintenance to have this happen but we're about to see production take off in a crazy way. So, let's see here. Yeah, 32, it's still not at 48, that's okay. But see, now this is leveling up because the refinery's demand went up, right? The, the, the fuel refinery's capacity went up to 200, so it's demanding more, so now that thing's gotta produce more, and it's going to have a cascade effect. Now again, I'd be a little worried if I didn't know that was about to level up because we're starting to get down to the point where we're going to see partially full trains. But I know it's coming, so it's cool. Alright, so we just got to wait for this to level up. I'll go ahead and jump in time, that way you don't just have to stare at the screen and, and wait for these arrows to get there so you can see kind of a, where we're leaving off for the day. Alright, we're to the point now where uh, all of our industries have leveled up. Uh, we're sitting at uh, March 1934 here. We're doing pretty well, all things considered. Um, I mean, this, that's, by the way, this profit is only for this one train, right? So this one train is sitting at 1.3. I mean, if you look at our line statistics, every line is profitable, but look at how much money we're making on this train. That's bonkers, right? So we're making serious cash. 2.2 million, obviously doing plenty well here, and the fuel line, it's profitable, which is all we want. We're making most of our money in the intermediate part of this. Now, that being said, notice how we've got, you know, a good amount of fuel here, but look at what's happened since this is leveled up. We're back to that original problem where we've got too much fuel. But we're also, if you look, there's not a whole lot of room for additional trucks, right? If we were to add any more trucks at this point, um, you would just start to see backups, right? And that's just because, you know, we're limited by the fact that these trucks can only carry nine. The fastest they can move is 25 miles an hour. So we're gonna have to just be okay with that for a little bit because pretty soon here, we'll start to see some new vehicles come out, including a new truck that'll move a little faster, carry a little more, get the job done a little bit quicker. Um, Hartford's doing pretty well. We're already up to 308. We've got, but we're in a, little, in a little bit of a pickle, and this will set up our next episode. We've got most of their fuel needs met, but we're still a decent ways off from growth, right? And the, and the issue here is they only have one customer. So probably next episode, we're going to look at building a line out to here, to Miramar, because as soon as we add another customer, then you're gonna see this one remaining bar get to upgrade territory so we can start cranking out more and making more money and just having a good time. And we'll probably need a third train then for this line, right? It'll have that ripple effect. So that's everything for our first episode. We are, our route is up and running. The Northwest, <laughs> ironically, the Northwestern is getting started hauling oil, not, you know, farm grain stuff. It's not really a Granger line, but we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll be doing food soon enough. So, 
Thanks for tuning in on the first episode. We'll uh, come back in with episode two, where, like I said, we'll expand out to the town of Miramar and look at you know what other industries do we want to add to this. So thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Make sure to like and subscribe.